All right, if we look way, way back in the distance back there, as I'm zooming in, that's the car that we're going to be looking at. It's a so-called 1970 Dodge RT Charger, and I believe that Dave actually bought two cars to build one. So when he gets it up here, we're going to take a look at this thing and uh, really get a good gander at it. My personal opinion, it's just another pile of shit that's going to take way more money to restore than the car will ever fucking be worth. And you'd be better off buying a car that's already restored than fucking around with this situation. Come on, a little more, there you go. That's good right there, Dave, good job. All right, bud, let's get a good look at your car. Give us a little story on it, and we'll see where we're gonna lead with it. So you tell me, hold on a minute. I want you to tell me why you think this car is worth a million fucking dollars. Go ahead. Well, it may not be worth a million, but uh, it's worth more than the piece of shit that uh, Norm had. You think had. it is, huh? Yeah, yeah. Okay, the piece of shit Norm had uh, had a lot more to it than this thing has. Well, this is a complete car. We just it is? Car. Yeah. Okay, tell us what's going on, bud. What's up? Well, this is an original Texas car. It's uh -huh. a 69 Charger RTSE. Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's back up a little bit, because when I first met you and you told me about this car, you actually bought two of these cars to make one. Yes. Okay, so you bought one that had something on it, and the other one had another thing on it, and you took two to make one. Okay. So is it a factory original, or yes. are you building this to be that no, car? No, it's, it's factory original. Because you told me that uh, you bought two cars, one was an RT Charger title, and the other one wasn't. Uh, no. Okay, what's the story now, Dave? <laughs> what's the scoop? The other one was a piece of shit. It was all rotted out. Okay, and then I, why did you buy two of them? Well, because I started buying sheet metal for the other one, and I figured by the time I buy all the sheet metal, uh -huh. I could probably just buy another car, which is what I did. All right. So I How much car. did you buy each car for? Uh, I paid 2000 for this one. 2000 for this one? Yes. Now, why did you get this one only for 2000 when uh, Norm claims he got 8500 for his? Uh, well, because I bought this 20 years ago. Oh, so you had this car for 20 years? Yes. Wow. Yeah. That's a long time, dude. And where's the other car at? The parts car. It's cut up. It's you cut it up. You took all the parts it. you needed. Yep. Took all the Show parts us what's going on with your piece of shit. So this piece of shit is a '69 Charger RTSE. Uh -huh. RT means road and track, which means it has all the high performance stuff: positive traction, heavy duty suspension, right? Everything like that. And the SE package is the leather interior, air conditioning. So this had 100% leather interior in it. Yes. Wow. Power windows, air conditioning, uh -huh. um, cruise control. Uh, it's got a rear window defogger. So this was basically the fully loaded model. Uh, yeah, you couldn't a lot of get those, anything better. Yeah, a lot of those options are, were even optional okay, for Can you kind of like thing. stand over here a little yep. bit? Yeah. All right, so we got a 70 model Charger RTSE. This is 69. 69, this ain't even a 70, so right. that just devaluated it right there. Because no, from it, what I understand. 69s are worth more. I thought the 70s were the big boys. Depends on who you talk to. Well, according to Norm, Mr. Fucking Know It All. That's, that's because it's Norm's car. Okay, this so. It's my car, so it's worth more. All right, so did you have to replace the floor in this or was the no. floor? As you can see, the floors are nice. I see that. They look brand new almost. So we don't have to do anything with the floors. The uh -huh. trunk floor was uh, rotted out. Let's so go we, look at that, bud. So we cut the trunk floor out. Uh huh. And um, the paint was questionable, so we stripped it, it because we didn't know what was underneath it. You got any rust up around your rear window by any chance? No, but somebody replaced this dungeon panel. Uh huh. But what they did was they welded it right over top of the old one. Oh, okay. So if you look underneath, so the that's old basically one's all a piece. Somebody up. put a piece of sheet metal somebody. on there. That's before they even made those panels. It could be. It could that's be. That's probably what it was. But it makes it worse because now you got two pieces of metal together and it's just going to rust in between them. Right. So it's a dumbass thing to do. And when we got to stripping this quarter panel on the passenger side, if you look at that, 
Um, it is nothing but uh, a Bondo buggy. It was hit on this side and just beat to shit. Right. So rather than trying to straighten that out, I think it's best just to put a quarter on it. Right, right, right. It's just like the trunk floor. They just welded metal right over top of oh. the old trunk floor and just caused it to rust out even more. So I remember when you came over here, it took you like about 12 weekends to get that floor out. So the idea is once we cut the quarter panels off, we're going to take it and have the whole car media blasted uh -huh. to get it down. And then I'll bring it back here and have you shoot some epoxy on it. And then we'll start going back the other right, way and put right. quarters on it. Well, it looks like you did a pretty good job. You cut each individual spot weld out and uh, did a really good job doing that. Um, what, what did you put on here? What is this? This is a uh, epoxy primer. Okay, that's just to protect it while you're working on it. Is that it? Yeah. What about the tail light panel? Are you going to put a new one on or are you going to no, keep I think, the original? No, uh, I think you talked me into fixing the original one. Did it's I? Not, yeah, it's not oh, really Oh, I that thought bad. I said to buy a new one. Uh, no, this the the, uh, the tail light panel. The lower balance was trash, so I yeah. bought a new one of those. What's going on up here, dude, on the front end? You got both the fenders missing on it? We took the fenders and the doors off because we could strip those parts at home. Uh huh. And um, I'm going to be pulling the engine and transmission out this weekend. Hopefully, I got that strapped down. But yeah, and now what kind there. of what kind of motor we got? It's a 383 Magnum. Okay, but I thought that the, the uh, 69 uh, SERT fucking Roadrunners, I mean, Chargers here had the 440 big blocks. The 440 was an option. 383 was an option. Yep. So back then, everything was an option. Yeah. Now, was this a factory air car? Factory air car, yeah. Now, uh, I had somebody that wanted to buy this car. They offered you 10 grand, and you said no. That's right. Just like it says. That's right. Because you said it's worth $20,000. Well, it is to me because you can't find them. I mean, so you're telling me if you put this on eBay or Craigslist, just like it sits, you're telling me you're going to get $20,000 fucking dollars for this car, just like it sits with all the work that needs done. That's what you're telling me. I'll bet I'll get some I'll hits. bet you $10. You would be lucky to get five or six grand for this piece of shit. What's your name, buddy? Jim. Okay, Jim, you just walked in on the conversation. Oh, yeah. Do you know a lot about old Ankle Classic cars? A little bit. So you're telling me that this pile of shit that we're looking at right here, that he's ending up, he's going to end up spending about 35 grand on this car. Am I right? No. No. I'm, not, I'm doing it myself. Plus, I'm okay, hold on. Jim says you're going to double that. Yeah. <laughs> nah. 60. You think so? No. Yeah. I'm thinking you're going to spend about $38,000 completely restoring this factory original, and you can buy one for about 40. No, I won't have that. I think you told me it was worth around forty. If I if I have to pay somebody to do all the work, yeah, it'd cost me that much. But I'm doing the stuff myself. Is he right, Jim? And uh, you restore it, cars? Are you kind bit. of a car restore guy? Yeah, a little bit. Do you ever finish your projects? Yeah, I got to finish one out front. You got one out front? Yeah. Okay, we'll look at that. As I'm gonna do okay, it. Okay, because this guy's been working on this car for how long? Twenty fucking years. Sitting in the barn for 20 years. Yeah, I've been sitting in the barn for 20 years. It's been 20 years on. just to get on it. Started working on it when in September. Yep. Yeah, September. Now, do you September. got all the interior for this car? We got all the interior. And it all needs to be completely redone. No, it's all done. You got all the glass, you got all the screws, all the, the glass, nuts, bolts, everything. Tinted glass. Because all I'm looking yeah. at here is basically a, a, a gutted out shell that's worth scrap iron, dude. <laughs> okay, I see that the floors are in good shape. That's nice because it was a Texas car. But I see. Complete rear quarter panels need replaced. You got the whole floor that needs replaced. You got a motor and transmission. We don't even know if that's number matching, Dave. What, the motor and transmission? We don't it's even not. know. It's okay, not. there you go. So right there, just evaluated it probably another nine or ten grand <laughs> because the numbers don't match unless you took the tag off, the, the fender tag, and put that fender tag on here. Hey, it's got headers, too. That means it's worth less money. Is that true? Oh, yeah. Is that right, Davis? He tell us the truth. To some people, yeah. Well, there you go. That's so true. you tell me how this car is worth forty fucking thousand dollars when we're sitting here looking at it. <laughs> okay, I, I can't believe this, dude. It's not. Worth I want to know what the fuck makes worth Mopars more. worth more money than any car on the market. You tell me what that oh, is. Because Mopars are, are uh, the best car. That's, That's bullshit. Because when they were built, they were the worst car made. They were the biggest <laughs> rust bucket that you could fucking buy. They were. And they, they were, were one of the most cheapest, inexpensive cars on the market. That's right. They were slapped together, and yeah. Kind of like a uh, Ford Mustang. They drive like a box. Yes. That's right. They drive they like a hard rock shit. on a on a on a soft road. That's true. Yeah, that's right. So why are they? Why are these rated? 
the, the highest, classiest, must, uh, fucking muscle cars in the world. Because, uh, in general, they had the most horsepower right out of the box. You know, right off the... You think Richard Petty might have had something to do with that? Maybe. You think Richard Petty, Daytona, number 43 guy, might have had something to do with it? What do you think, Jim? Uh, probably. You think the corporation had something to do with it when, when they came, when NASCAR came up to him and said, you can't race your cars until you have a factory car that actually sells on the market? And they came up with this Daytona Superbird Super shit. Yeah. Huh? Yep. Now, I just want to let you know something here, Jim. Dave actually owns a Daytona. You do? Number matching, 100% authentic, original Daytona. Well, I'm sorry you can't run it in the Oscar of the Outlaw. <laughs> yeah, that's true. They were too fast. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Is that the, is that true? Yeah. yeah. The NASCARs were too fast for the Daytona. Nobody else could keep up with them, so they outlawed. So Richard Petty was a winner straight out of the box. Yeah. What else, Dave, about your pile of shit here, bud? Talk. What else you want to know? I don't know. You're the professional. You're talking okay, about. Okay. What about the front suspension? Does this got the beefed up front suspension? Well, they didn't really beef up this front suspension. They didn't, or they did. They did. So they that's just your same. basic they're, Mopar. They were all the same. That's the same as a fucking Roadrunner. Yeah. Yep. What about the rear end? What's so beefy about that? What makes the rear end better than the one I'd say on Norm's car? Uh, the extra leaf springs. Okay, so what? It's got an extra leaf spring, so it'll ride even stiffer than the rock that it is? Wow, for torque. Yeah. Well, See? all I can say, Dave, is good luck with your beautiful car that you got here. Uh, how long is it going to take you to do the rear quarter panel, bud? Uh, hopefully I'll have them off this weekend. Oh, you're going to take both of them off? Taking both of them off. So you're going to replace both quarter panels? Yes. You think you're going to go to the extreme of having to replace that roof panel up there? No. What about door skins? Door skins are fine. What about front fenders? Front fenders are great. The hood's great. Okay. Is that a factory hood or is that off the other car? No, it's factory. That's a factory hood? Yep. How much is one of those worth if you put it on eBay to sell it? 500 bucks. That's all? Yep. But the whole car is worth about 40000 Yeah, but you can buy these hoods. Yeah. You know. Okay, Zach. Whatever you say, bud. Yeah, this one comes with three. Well, good luck, Dave. And hopefully, uh, you know... We might see it one day before my friend Pete moves to Moab, Utah, but I seriously doubt it. <laughs> Gosh, I hope so. Right, Zach? Absolutely. Okay, bud. See you all later.